It's a real uh, pleasure to welcome you all to the first of the sessions here under the Words of Wisdom uh, uh, track. And I have a fantastic panel here. Uh, we're just uh, talking about it. I think this is a truly global panel. Uh, you will hear four different accents here, you know, as we uh, 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 start this conversation. I think you'll see that. But uh, again, uh, as Satish mentioned, uh, this is uh, the format for this entire track today is uh, really for audience to ask the questions. So as a moderator, uh, hopefully I have a very limited role here. Uh, so I'll just lead it off uh, with uh, you know, a request to each of the panelists to share a little bit about their background and uh, specifically as it relates to seed funding. Okay? And after that, we'll uh, get into the QA. Thank you. Um, my name is Carol Sands, and um, I have a, a dual role. I run a venture fund called the Halo Funds, and I'm also the uh, founding member of the Angels Forum, which is a group of professional angel investors here in Silicon Valley. Um, we've been investing for the last 20 years, and um, most of us are uh, still in the recovering entrepreneur status um, rather than in retired. The other part that I thought was interesting was that um, most of the um, members of the Angels Forum took little to no venture capital money. And um, I want to put that out there because um, right now in Silicon Valley, it's almost like if you haven't taken venture money, you must not be serious about your startup. And I just want to remind all of you that if you can figure out a business model that allows you to grow um, a good, solid business without taking venture, good for you, and, um, and never feel like you have to apologize for that. And, um, and if you need ideas about how to figure that out, we're happy to help. My background, a uh, tech entrepreneur, uh, started my career at Intel for about 10 years, uh, then built a company called Sierra Atlantic uh, that is in uh, IT services with business process integration, uh, funded by NEA, uh, Walden, and uh, GE, and uh, ran it over 17 years. Uh, it took a long time. Uh, I guess you can call me kind of a slow entrepreneur. But uh, we grew, grew to be a substantial size, about 2,500 employees worldwide, and Hitachi bought my company about six years ago. And uh, subsequently, I've been spending a lot of my time uh, working with uh, startups both here and uh, also in India, uh, companies, uh, startups in India building products for a global market. And uh, I've personally done about uh, 30 or so uh, angel investments myself, and uh, sometimes with uh, groups of other you know, angel uh, forums and angels. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ajay. So um, my name is Oded Hermon. You can hear my accent. It's Israeli. Um, I'm a, I have two hats, just like Carol. Um, my day job is I'm a, a partner at a family-owned fund called Rhodium, makes is, uh, early stage investments in Israel and the US. Um, I'm also, um, I'm honored uh, for being in the past five years part of the uh, screening committee of Thai Angels which I suggest to all of you to apply. It's one of the best angel clubs uh, in the Bay. Um, also the co-chairman of J Angels, which is a Jewish-Israeli um, investment group uh, here in the Bay. Um, because Kel started already, and I think she said something that um, really worth listening to. No, I, I agree with her uh, 100%. Just another example, um, our family, the family that I'm a partner uh, with, invested in a company called Mobileye uh, 17 years ago. It takes a long time for those companies to get mature until they're being acquired for $15 billion. Um, Was that with the were B? No, there were no other VCs in this company. Yeah. Until they <laughs> went IPO, there were no other VCs. So VC is not always the answer, and I totally agree with you. Sometimes it's better to go to uh, private investors who understand this industry, who believe in you, who can give you the right resources for what you need and, and the time, and help you to get the VCs are not necessarily, it's just another vehicle, okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so my name's uh, Ron John, Ron John Narg, and uh, I've been in the Valley about 30 years or so, and uh, my background is uh, started off Ac academically, uh, so uh, 
my PhD was in the uh, AI space, and I uh, started uh, essentially Stanford's first neural network company in 1991. And uh, that company was doing speech and handwriting recognition, and we sold it to Motorola. And going echoing the comments of uh, Carol and Oded, uh, the seed investment in that was $500. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we got it started. For me, it was actually quite a lot of money at the time. It was, I was just on a yeah. student stipend. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, I think we got a 20,000% return, 20,000x return. Um, and um, uh, the next one uh, started uh, the, the first mobile app store, uh, and that was more venture financing, um, more what you'd call so called traditional route, and sold that to BlackBerry. And uh, the third one was where I was more the advisor and investor, uh, uh, Vocal IQ. Um, we sold that to Apple. So my reputation is starting companies and selling them to mobile phone companies. Uh, so I'm a fellow at Stanford at the moment, and I'm also on the screening committee of uh, Thai Angels, uh, which takes a wide variety of companies uh, to look at, um, and a very experienced set of entrepreneurs in the group to uh, people who've sold companies and run companies to invest in different kinds of companies. Uh, and I'm also director of MIT Angels, and that, that group tends to look at uh, very deep science kinds of companies, deep, deep technology kind of companies. Uh, so, so one of the messages is, you know, as you're looking for seed funding, um, you, know, you need the right amount and uh, the right type of investors. There's different investors for different types of companies. And I also like to say, um, you know, uh, my first company took uh, sort of 18 months beginning to end uh, for exit. Uh, to sort of, and, but the second company took 10 years. So if you can't get funding, that's not necessarily, you know, they might be actually doing you a favor. You might be, essentially, you have to be prepared to spend 10 years or 17 years um, into, into your ventures. You, you better sort of like what you're, the, the kind of activity that you're going to do uh, to put that commitment. And when I make an investment, I just assume it's a 10 year, 10 year cycle. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, if the investment community may be uh, hesitant, that, uh, that, that's a signal. It doesn't mean they're right. Most of the time they're, they're wrong, of course. So uh, you should still do it. Uh, just in very quickly, if each of you can sort of uh, talk about what are the top two things that you look for in the entrepreneur when somebody comes to you for seed funding? Um, for us, um, the key issue for um, the entrepreneurial side of the equation is, is there a team? And um, so we never invest in a single entrepreneur. It's always in a team. Um, and, and so then the next question obviously is how solid is that team? Because the one thing I'm really clear about is you will hit at some point a <gasps> oh no <laughs> moment. I can't tell you where, I can't tell you what it's going to be about, but I can guarantee you, you will hit one of those. And most companies hit more than one. And at that moment, the question is, does the team come together and say, we'll show them, we'll solve this problem, we'll get through this together? Or do they look at each other and silently say, I better update my resume? So um, I'm really clear that if the team is solid and committed, given uh, normal responses, I should be able to make money as an investor. So, um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm checking those two boxes. Okay. Well, I, I can echo Carol. Um, always we, we look for, the good, for a good team. We look at the wide eye of the entrepreneurs because we understand the up and downs. And because of those up and downs, we also look if we can help this company, if we can bring any added value. Because when, when we are going into a, the, old, the old situation, mm -hmm. they need partners to work with them. And we need to see that we can really bring value to them at that situation. The, the other thing is to, to check the market fit. We see a lot of times that good entrepreneurs uh, who do not understand the market, um, it's still good because good entrepreneurs can do pivots, so it, it's a good start, mm -hmm. but 
not understanding the market and sometimes it's a good technology that is looking for a market uh, becomes a problem. So we, we try to understand wisdom if we understand the market and if they understand the market and there's a need for what they're doing. Right, let me double click on a couple of those things. Uh, so I like, I like uh, to look at the team, uh, but I specifically look at the founder or founders. Um, I get nervous if there's too many founders, you know, if it's four or five people who are founders. Uh, I think often two is a good number, three is a good number, for me at least, I, uh, I like that, where they can bounce ideas off each other. Um, I like to see uniqueness in the product set. So sometimes I say, this is a plus and a minus, so sometimes the reason it's unique because no one else thinks it's a work market worth getting into, yeah. and that's why there's no competitors. Um, but uh, historically, in my experience, I prefer having only one or two competitors versus dozens, so I don't like crowded spaces. Other investors see that as more validation if there are other, other, other companies in the space and, and, why, and why is your company better than, than the rest. But um, my preference is I, I like to look at very unique uh, products that are difficult to do. Uh, so it's difficult for other companies, <laughs> other competitors uh, to, to enter the market. Um, and uh, the uh, uh, third point is uh, validation. So if, if there's a customer, even if it's a small customer, that's, that's a check off box I like to see. You know, is someone piloting, someone using it? Uh, how dependent is the customer on this product? Is it nice to have or must have? So uh, I like it as if, if it's a must have where it, where it cannot be replicated by any other function. Uh, and the other sort of orthogonal way to ana analyze that is is it like a, like a no brainer? So is it a function that can be. Um, done somehow, and this is typically in uh, uh, the automation process, uh, so, so something that's done manually, that costs X, and uh, it's done, and you can automate it and do it for one-tenth of X, uh, 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 I like that. And I think 10 to 1 is the kind of the ratio. I see business plans say, oh, this is 30% better than X, and that's, that's not enough. I need, need to see a 10X, because, and the assumption there is if it's only 30%, that wait a year and technology has improved and your advantage has gone away. So I'd like to see 10x uh, improvement if, if, it's a, if it's a product that's in an industry where there's a function already there. The connection between you and your co-founder is super important. Um, the strength of the company comes from there. Uh, you are alone because you have a board that is separated from you. You have employees, you have uh, customers. Basically being a CEO of a company and a founder is the most loneliness position yep. in the world. You can't show that you are, uh, you know, uh, weak oh. to anyone. Um, you always need to, to come home to one uh, significant other. <laughs> and, and you all also need to be, to find the right partner for this journey because it's a very, very hard one. Uh, so this is one of the things that we are looking for. Just. Just continuing what you said. Mm -hmm. yeah, great point, Dr. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, uh, this is one thing I wanted to add to what uh, Ranjan and the other panel members said. Um, you know, certainly it's the team, the market, uh, but uh, I think Ranjan touched upon that, uh, which is, uh, you know, having some sort of customer validation is important, you know, especially here in the Valley. I mean, there are, of course, a lot of, plenty of money, but at the same time, there are a lot of entrepreneurs too, a lot of very good entrepreneurs who are sort of, you know, have these wonderful ideas. So if you place yourself in the shoes of the investor, oftentimes, yeah, even if you surface out of every 10 into the top two or three, the entrepreneur that has already some customer validation typically you know, has an edge over the other. So just uh, keep that in mind. Increasingly, I think that, at least for me, when I look at deals, that's something I do pay attention to. Anyway, uh, I think we'll open it up uh, to the floor for questions. Uh, Hello, my name is Stephen Flynn. I Hi. thought I'd just jump up and be the first. And uh, I'm, my company's called Sky Tango. Um, I'm, I'm an American living in Ireland, and my co-founder is my, my, my wife, Susan. So. <laughs> I get that kind of resonates with me. You're, you're, our, our plan is burn the bridge behind you, and then you can't ever go back. So we're <laughs> always going forward. And my, my question is really about 
The, uh, um, uh, it, real quickly, our product is it's a, it's a marketplace for drone operations. And what we do is we take the data off the drone and the licensing of the pilot and the execution of the job, and we give it a compliance certificate, essentially, and we tag that with the content that comes off the drones. So our customers like the BBC News, uh, a lot of uh, Getty Images, a, a lot of enterprise-level customers that can't be caught using illegally acquired content. And what's really interesting for us is we've been out now about 18 months out of an accelerator in Dublin. And on Tuesday, we've got a group of uh, syndicate angels coming in for uh, hopefully the last conversation before we do a term sheet. And our situation is really interesting in that we've managed to build the brand before the product was actually fully ready. So we have really strong vanity metrics on the internet, on Twitter. They actually outperform many of the people in our industry that have already done A and B rounds. And so we've got really strong brand, and now we're trying to slot in the, the product underneath that. And we do have some financial traction, but it's, it's pretty minimal. You know, they're in beta trials, and it goes to your point, they need it, but we just haven't been able to get If you can get to, to the question, please. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. My, <laughs> yeah. So my question is, my question is, is how do you value that? You know, when you're in the conversation with, with an angel around, you know, it's not strong financial metrics, but you have really strong market, you know, uh, presence. And I'm, we're, we're just going to go into that conversation. I'm wondering how you would value that in terms of the valuation of the company, one against the other. So given that you are doing a B2B, I actually wouldn't value it very high. Um, so um, you're in a, a business that is, um, for your small select group of customers, is a must have, so that's fabulous. I'm more likely to give you extra bonus points for that. Um, and uh, on the other side, you're in a small market. Um, and so the financial metrics start being the overriding uh, concept um, here. So um, I get it that a lot of people spend time and energy on uh, social media and, and um, building a brand. Um, and for some businesses, that's really important. But on a practical basis, when you end up having a buyer of your um, product or service, and that group of buyers is less than a couple of thousand, brand doesn't matter. Performance matters. And, um, and so you've spent all this time and energy on something that doesn't matter. So um, before you start doing that, figure out what's, what's the, um, the outcome of that. Uh, my name is Surya. I'm founder of Syrup Technologies, uh, which is a startup company focused on enabling technologies for automated driving. And uh, we have patents, uh, patent pending technologies on uh, high assurance lane keeping and platooning that's radar based, uh, where it's provably uh, much higher safety assurance than any of the existing methods. And we have validation from both academia and experts uh, who have been working on aut automated highways for you know decades, like 40 years, though they could not commercialize it. But we also have you know a validation from OEMs themselves. Like you know we have support letters from very large OEMs, like in India and abroad. My question is like you know when it's a hardware kind of a product, which uh, which can be pretty you know, intensive and we need engineering resources to kind of build something like that. We are all looking for strategic funding, but when is a good time to approach angels? Because angels are typically looking for already validated product or where there's uh, already money in the, <laughs> uh, money coming in, like, which is not the case for a hardware product like this. Like, so, uh, I think angels are ideal for very early stages because sometimes they'll be irrational in terms of like, they think they, they know the space or they've been in the industry or they've made other investments. I don't know if my colleagues disagree, but hardware at the VC level at the moment um, is, uh, is not locked on that favorably. <laughs> Uh, and I think that's actually a mistake because it's easier now to do hardware than it used to be. Uh, there's a lot more systems, and uh, from an investor point of view, hardware is often priced lower. The, the, the valuations are priced. Kickstarter. Yeah, we have Kickstarter to validate it. The VCs are only just beginning to sort of catch up with the, these kind of models. Um, and so you might actually get better traction with the angel community on hardware deals. Uh, and um, so I'll stop there. Um, I, I would say that with all funding issues, the um, key to finding the right funder is to say who really cares 
about the outcome of this company. And um, if you can come up with a, um, a demographic of the, who, the, who would care, then um, looking for the investors within that demographic becomes a lot easier for the uh, fundraiser. Angels come in all sh sorts of shapes, sizes, uh, geographies. I mean, um, we had a, an entrepreneur that came in to meet with us the other day who's in the clothing business. And there is a sub-community here in um, the Bay Area that understands clothing, but it's a really small segment. If you're in clothing, you need to be looking for funding where the clothing industry has some um, deep expertise. And so maybe, um, you know, what you're looking for, um, and, and I'm not saying that's true with this particular company, but maybe the answer isn't here in Silicon Valley. Maybe it's in other parts of the country. And you just need to be thoughtful about where you're going to find your uh, funding sources. I totally agree with, with what Carol said. So like, let's say you're in the ad, advertising business, okay? So um, you can go and find more experts in New York or in LA. If you're in the movie industry and you're trying to do something like that, you will probably find it in LA. Um, Agritech or, or maybe um, um, healthcare could be either here, San Diego, or in in Boston. So um, think about ecosystems, and each ecosystem represents different interests. So if you go uh, Snapchat, for example, maybe it would be hard for them to raise money in Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> so so we need to yeah. think always what what's the right matching and where we can find the right the right people uh, and how we get to them f as fastest as we can. People move over here because they think this is the make of funding. Well, we do have a lot of money here. <laughs> it is make of funding. <laughs> Thank you. But there are other you know, when you when you go to Mecca, you you're fighting with another with, with lots of other good entrepreneurs. Other entrepreneurs, yeah. And sometimes, if you go to other places where you have a specific advantage, and this place has an advantage for you, it's a better match. This is what I'm saying. Um, so we are working on 3D object recognition, and there and is your a name, Nira Mehta. Yeah. Um, there is a need of the solution in construction industry. A similar problem might arise in the AR VR industry in future, but the timing is uncertain. So the question is, is it better to go after a slow growth market and a smaller market potentially, which is more certain, or go after a potentially big AR, AR market whose timing is not that certain? Good, good question. Uh, so I, I've been notorious for starting companies 10 years before they're actually ready. Uh, and it's, it, it, and I, think, I think basically that's, that's the answer to the question. Um, if your vision is uh, that your product is going to fit into a market that's not ready, but how can you get there so you're the number one company five, six years down the road? I mean, I, I did the mobile app store in 1999, right? We were doing smartphones in the 1996 timeframe. It was uh, a Nokia 6. Yeah, before that even. So. <laughs> <laughs> the Motorola. The Motorola. Motorola. <laughs> Before uh, the internet. Uh, speech recognition, <laughs> not before the internet. <laughs> but uh, so, so psychologically, uh, you've got to work with you and yourselves and your team and any potential investors say, well, this is my vision. And there'll be many points during that time frame. And so this might be the length of time. But when we get there, you know, we'll be the, uh, you know, be, be in the right position to, to harvest fields. And um, you know, I think that. The tendency of investors says, well, no, how can I get a big market right now? I can't have a big, you know, is there a market right now that's big, getting the hockey stick? Um, and there'll be that style of investor. There's another set of investors who will be more patient, uh, who are more, so look, yeah, I think it's good you're getting revenue now on something and the market is there and you've got a vision to up, up, upscale it. Um, but you've really got to get a matching uh, thing uh, uh, with, with the potential investors. Um, I, I can try to answer it as well. Um, listen, I think any investor here always try to do something that is, uh, in a way, we try to to be to make a revolution in, in certain areas, and this sometimes means that we need to invest in something very early. 
Uh, I invested in drones in 2005. Um, it wasn't a good timing, right? It was. It took about 10 years for this uh, industry to. So we had no ecosystem. Um, and at the end, when you think about an angel or any seed investor, is part of a value chain. So we take you from here. From, from A to B, and someone needs to take you from B to C and, and elsewhere. And if there's no one to take you from B to C, it's hard for us, it's hard for you. Um, I can't tell you specific about your industry. I'm just saying that you should look for, we are looking for an ecosystem that can help the companies further on, still be the first one in the market. Um, the second thing is um, sometimes it's, um, it works. So the, the example that we, I gave before about Mobileye, Mobileye tried to do self-driving cars 17 years ago. This was the vision, right? I mean, think about it. It's quite a crazy idea, right? 17 years ago, just like 99 app stores. Um, so sometimes it's worth it. We are in a business of a lot of luck. And sometimes the market behaves different than what we think. Um, so, so uh, in order to solve your problem, sometimes you can find strategic investors because strategic investors sometimes bring you the right value for that kind of, of investments that can be more patient. They see the added value from being exposed to early stage technology in the area. So this is another option that is not necessarily in the model of angels and, and VCs. Okay. Actually, I'll just you. comment on that one just before we finish. The, the strategic investors, they've got P&L too. That, they're in the same problem that you have. Should I invest in this crazy technology that's only going to be ready six years from now? So I can either do that internally, but it's going to hit my P&L. But if I make an investment in you, economically, it's more, it's, it actually helps them. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Karanveer Mundre. I'm director of a company called Atharva Life Sciences Consulting. We're based in Bangalore. Uh, I had two quick questions. One is that, uh, you know, uh, the concept of secrecy, till what time, uh, you know, when should we sign NDAs? How should, because many of the people we approach, we have never spoken to them uh, before. We don't know them, especially investors and second, all and these kind of, and everybody. Uh, you know, how much should the, how much should we talk about it and how do we protect it via telling people? And the second concept of you, you everybody talk, talked about the concept of creating a team. Uh, well, sometimes, uh, you know, we don't have a team. Uh, just be like, we, have, we are an individual who came up with a concept. Would the, uh, you know, the angel or, you know, would you, would, would the panel or similar people help us in creating, suggest people, creating a team, uh, filling in the blank spaces, uh, things like that? Thank you. So the venture community um, is got a long time history of um, agreeing to put a team um, around you, but understand almost always within 12 months, you're no longer in the company. Because you're not a useful team member to them because they've put a team together that they want. Um, and so, you know, if you want to be a part of the company going forward, I highly recommend that you build the team that you want. Uh. So um, it, it's a choice. The secrecy issue um, is one that a lot of entrepreneurs seriously misunderstand. So let me start with the basics. No experienced investor will ever sign an NDA, ever, no matter how secretive it is, because an NDA is just a good excuse to turn around and sue me. So I'm never going to put myself in that position. Um, and two, is as much as you think that your idea is worth a lot of money, it's really worth nothing unless you execute on it. And so um, part of the reason why the um, whole attitude around um, secrecy is so loose here in Silicon Valley is because everybody understands it's not the idea, it's the delivery of the idea that makes money. And in the process of talking about the concept with others, sometimes you can get some really good ideas and make it better. And in the long run, that's more successful. Um, I saw so many entrepreneurs who were so um, afraid of sharing the idea 
that they stayed together alone in the room for many years, and they stayed there. <laughs> If you don't share, it wouldn't work, right? I mean, um, uh, VCs for, for sure, this is the business is not to make, is to invest in companies and help those companies to grow. It's not to do those companies. Some of them have been entrepreneurs in the past, they did it already. They have a lot of respect to your ideas, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. I think Silicon Valley is the only place where rich people are looking to meet with poor people, <laughs> right? <laughs> they want to hear from them. It's the only place in America. And there's a sense for it. Um, so they think that you know more than they know about what you should know. And based on that, when you share with them, they will give you their, mostly uh, their perspective of seeing lots of other companies maybe in this area, maybe uh, patterns of companies that try to do similar things, but they won't try to do it themselves because they will hurt their reputation. And the only thing that we have here, all of these people in this panel, is reputation. This is the most important thing. When we damage our reputation, we won't see other companies, we won't play in this uh, town again. Okay, so we are also a player in this game. Just well, I was just thinking, uh, you yeah. can just flip what today had said and you know, also describe it as Silicon Valley is the only place where the poor people are willing to meet rich people because these are typically investors are poor in ideas and entrepreneurs are rich in ideas. So. Depends on how you look at it. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, um, I'm Borani. I run Solvani uh, Corporation. The name of the company is Solvani because we are here to solve a business problem for the large enterprises, right? And uh, a quick question about the team. Um, you mentioned about we need to have, uh, you'll be looking for a strong team, right? Normally in uh, small startups, we are very few handful of people, three or four people. We do, uh, we wear multiple hats. Uh, we do product development, pro engineering, marketing, sales, everything. Do you look for, uh, 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 I don't, I, I know that you will not be looking for a structured team, but any team size or uh, go to market strategies, is there anything that you'll be really looking for from the skill sets of the people? I think the, um, I, my first company, our peak, we were three people, right? We started off with two people and we got acquired when we were three people. Um, and the three people all had, uh, they're all PhDs, but they had um, complementary skill sets uh, and uh, uh, had similar backgrounds. Um, you know, so two of us had work at this, been at the same university. So the things I look at uh, teams is, well, how, long, how do you know each other, right? Did you just meet each other three weeks ago? Uh, or did you uh, go to school together? Or did you work in the same company? Um, did you work on a similar project? Did, did you play basketball together? What, what, what is it? Some, it help gives me more comfort if you've actually been known each other for, uh, for, 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 for some time. And going back to the previous question, if I don't have a team, what, what do I do about it if I don't have the right uh, person? Um, and I would start off by looking at your own existing network first, right? Who have you worked with? Who have you liked working with? And who can bring skills to that, 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 that uh, matter? If you can't employ them, if, you, if they don't want to join yet, but can they actually be on the sidelines if you did get funding uh, to, uh, to, to join? Who would commit to, upon funding that, you, that, that they, would, they would join? Um, and then uh, secondly, when you come to things like this, you bump, you bump into in, this, in Silicon Valley, there's like an event almost every night on some topic. And so it's relatively easy to network in, 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 in the Bay Area. Uh, and uh, you'll start networking. And again, I wouldn't jump in with someone you just met three weeks ago, two weeks ago. You get to, get to know, the, know the person. How could they add value? That would be my recommendation. Um, it's OK. Um, well, I can just uh, continue what you said. Um, first of all, there's two. Usually it's two co-founders, right? One is um, doing the business side and the other is doing the technological side. Um, we do hope that they know each other for a while uh, and they complementary to each other. Um, sometimes we, we do understand that you don't have all the expertise, um, but this is the core. So if you bring good understanding in your business, 
or some track record in your business and the other one is good in engineering, for example, it's a good start. Um, I just want to give a um, promotion to this, uh, uh, to Thai, that this is a great place to find other uh, team members. Uh, Thai is built for that. I mean, uh, this is probably one of the biggest networks of entrepreneurs and, and related. But there are other things, just like you said, that there are meetups all the time in Silicon Valley. There's, um, there are apps that you can use, like Silo. I don't know if you know Silo, but Silo is like a, it's a, it's a network of entrepreneurs, <coughs> social network entrepreneurs that you can find. You say, I'm looking for someone, and it's an app. So there are lots of other opportunities to find. Um, but as it's been said, take your time with each one, because um, even reading CV, it takes time to understand what he really did in the company, okay? Because a lot of people here been to Google or whatever. What exactly this guy did in the company, it takes a while to understand and check it. Don't, don't I mean, because if you waste your time on the wrong guy, it will take you six months to understand it. And it can blow your company. Yeah. My name is Dev Shah. I'm a CEO and founder of Foodie Log, which is a social media sharing app for foodies. And it's a multi-sided platform kind of business model. And as I look for early investors, there's a lot of chicken and egg kind of issues with multi-sided platforms. When I you know, present my metrics, should I focus on non-paying user growth or the business side growth? And also when I look for a strategic investor, should I be looking for someone that can uh, help me with the non-paid user marketing side or more on the monetization customer side? This is like, I think it's, it's all the questions and then, you know, all the oldest questions is first of all getting traction or getting monetization, right, in, in this area. And all the, all the companies ask the same question uh, in, in social and in consumer in a way. Um, there, are, there are bad news that I can tell you that the, it's, it's up and down in Silicon Valley and the bars are sometimes changing, okay? So there were years where um, only traction of a certain numbers, let, let's say one million users or 100,000 users would be enough to raise an A round. Some, in, in the past months, it was 10 million active users and also getting revenues. Um, in consumer and social, it's much easier to gain traction and your numbers will be, you know, your graph will look different than your, your monetization graph. So my suggestion, focus on where it's easy at the beginning. And before you start raising your money, start showing that you have also beginning of monetization because the graphs will look different. One will be raising much sharply and the other one will be you know, slow curve. Um, but show both of them because the investors would like to understand that you have good conversion and that yes, you can with your limited resources can gain some, some money because money is still the, now it's the game here. I mean, it's not only eyeballs like we had in 99, it's not only traction. It's also showing that this is a real business. And when you tell us social um, network, I can also say that it is a, I feel like automatic rejection, okay? Because we've been seeing so many of those. So, so you need to overcome this rejection that is for many of the investors by showing that something is, is, is sustainable. Okay. I, would, I would give slightly different advice. I, when, when you're at those checkpoints about do I go left, do I go right, um, I would say look out into the future and say what do I want as the end game? Do I want to be acquired by somebody? And, um, and if so, who is that? And what do they need to see in order to be able to acquire me? Or do I wanna build a company that is a lifestyle business and it's going to provide a source of income for uh, me and the rest of the team for a long period of time? Or do I wanna do an IPO? What do I need to do to accomplish that? And then once you've figured out what end game you want, start working backwards. And um, it will start 
telling you what kind of investor to um, look for, um, how fast does the company need to grow. It'll tell you um, based on what kind of investors you're trying to attract, what kind of metrics you're going to have to um, show, and at what point. It, it actually becomes extremely clear once you know what you want as your end game. Interesting. Uh, I mean, just one comment on what Carol said. Um, you know, it's, it's a disagreement necessarily, but uh, just uh, when we talk about uh, the end game being to be acquired or being a public company. Or a lifestyle. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, but, but just uh, between those two, uh, I always thought of to be acquired, you still have to think, act, and build a company to be a high quality public company someday. Then the right things will happen. So in a lot of markets, it's not so much about, you know, I, I guess a lot of times to be acquired is not quite the, it, it's not that different from trying to be a high quality public company. Th then the right things will happen. J j just a perspective. That, yeah. My name is Ramesh Rao, Silicon Valley resident, but just uh, started a company with IP out of Hyderabad, India in capturing uh, VR panoramic view. Uh, it's uh, geometric optics and all that kind of stuff. So uh, there's a lot of talk about investments and different things. My question is from the perspective of the founder CEO. How can they groom themselves to be very good at what they do and protect their position? Okay. Uh, how can you, I mean, not as investors, but yeah, yeah. based on your experience, what kind of advice you can give? Okay, good. And uh, my name is Vinay, and uh, I'm, I'm part of two ventures. One of them we are running very successfully, and we found our investor very quickly just sitting around the table. And, and you're, you're saying that, you know, the right matching is very important to find. So uh, in our second venture, which is more about empowering women, so we, how, do, how, to, how, how do we do the right matching? Because I think it may take a lot of time or, you know, how, how do we do it? Because there are so many invest investors and so many startups. So. So, so quick answer on that one. Just simply look at the investors. What else have they invested in? Is it similar to what you're doing? Yeah. Have they invested in no, VR companies, for example, before? Uh, your answer, quick answer to your question. No, once again, just, can oh. I just add to what oh, yeah, you said, just to finish it? Yeah. And I think you should ask, just con continuing that, and ask the companies that they have invested in, but they yeah. think about the investor. This no, but just that, that, that may not be the right investor for me because he, he, he might have failed in his opinion or, or the, maybe the founders were not the right guys where he invested. I'll just get the information. Yeah. Either, either <laughs> just way. ask them. And then on the, on the grooming side, I mean, if, if you're in the Silicon Valley, you know, there's, there's, there's lots and lots of networking opportunities with other entrepreneurs. Get the basics of what a term sheet says, you know, what does preferred stock mean? Uh, uh, they don't seem to teach you at business school what the different uh, preferred levels mean and what does participate preferred mean, all these kinds of things. Uh, that uh, So at least you know what the language is and it's not being put past you. Um, I'll stop there. Yeah. I, I would um, say that one of the singular most important things about being a founder is being a leader. And the uh, key element of leadership for me is courage. And uh, I don't think a lot of people focus on how courageous entrepreneurs are and how important it is to have the, the moral fortitude to be able to stand up and say, I have this harebrained idea that the rest of you may not understand, <laughs> but I see a future for it. And um, I think that's the, probably the single most important um, of being a good entrepreneur. It helps if you have other leadership skills, but um, if you have all of that and no courage, you're never going to succeed. Well, that's a wonderful line, Carol. So, uh, Thank you. You need so to be a bit crazy. So uh, maybe just a closing comments from each one of you. Uh, Carol, unless you want to add anything else to what you said, <laughs> that is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. No, I'm okay, just saying uh, that no, you need to be a bit crazy in order to be entrepreneur because the world is against you. So you need to be you know, over that and, and understand that you will be having facing a lot of rejections from a lot of people and still, 
you will lose your family, your house, your <laughs> friends, many other things. <laughs> but you know, you believe in something, and and we believe in those people because uh, you know they take right. this courage and this vision, and they take it the, the leadership to something else. Yeah, Ranjit. Just, I think you just need to try it out, uh, but take feedback from the market and the investor community if you need investment. And uh, I think as we started out, maybe you, you don't need investment. Maybe you can start with the $500 and just start there. You made a lot of money from yeah. the $500. That's well, <laughs> again, uh, I think there's just a fantastic uh, panel here. Uh, uh, just one uh, closing comment. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, players in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, it's, you have the seed investors, you have the venture capitalists, you've got investment bankers, law firms, you know, all kinds of uh, uh, participants. But there's none that's as important as each one of you, the entrepreneurs. And uh, the world certainly needs more of you to succeed. So good luck with that. And hopefully you found this, uh, this conversation useful. Thank you. Thank you.